So welcome. My name is Alex and I'll be leading this workshop. Uh, today we will focus on how to create an effective resume. Please stop me at any moment if you have any questions. And you can also drop them in on the chat. On Facebook, we are Facebook Live and we're also recording the session so that it can be available to you later on um, if you need it. And yeah, let's get started. So first of all, um, we want to define what is a resume. Most of you might have already come across the term and might have already made one or have someone else make one for you. Uh, resume is a document used to highlight your background um, and a hiring manager uses it to determine you're a good match for the job you're applying to. Um, so it's very important that you have a near perfect resume. Uh, and today we'll go over the basic components of a resume, which include sections for contact information, education, work experience, skills, and awards. So the very first thing your resume should have is information on how an employer can contact you. It is very important that you keep the section up to date since you might miss out on a job if you have a wrong email or phone number listed. And you might, you must include your name um, in the easiest way to get a hold of you. Um, I recommend you add one phone number and one email at least, but you can add additional emails or phone numbers if you want, and there are also great places to get a hold of you. Uh, Additional information can be added if you have it, such as your LinkedIn account, um, a personal website, or your home address. And yeah, so now I will show you an example. So here um, you can see what the section could look like. Um, you can see there's a name, the email, the phone number, and the LinkedIn account uh, link in here. Um, the formatting can definitely be different um, as well, but for now, we're just going to focus on the content. Um, I'll, um, yeah, so this is really what it looks like. I don't know if anybody has questions or anything um, about this section so far, um, but if not, you can just move to the next um, portion. So next up is um, the education section. And this section tells the hiring manager about your academic qualifications. And depending on the job you're looking for, this section might be more important to employers than experience. Um, but likewise, uh, many jobs will weight um, this section so heavily if experience is more important for a certain job. If your job requires a high school diploma, but you have more education beyond that, you don't necessarily need to include your high school education, uh, especially if it has been quite a bit of time since you graduated. Um, some jobs might require other sorts of training, such as car or food service jobs where an apprenticeship might be more important than actual um, schooling, um, high school, college, et cetera. Um, so these kinds of experiences can be listed under the education section as well. Uh, my main recommendation is that you include what's important and relevant to the job that you're applying to. Um, so you might have a certificate in bookkeeping. Let's say the job that you want is in construction. So you not necessarily need to include the bookkeeping certificate. Um, and then because listing it uh, will take space, that can be better used to highlight your skills 
um, that are more relevant to construction services. Uh, for each entry in the section, you must include the name of the institution that granted the degree or certificate, the date when you finished the program, and the type of program you did. In some cases, you can include your GPA, um, but only do this if you have a really great GPA. Um, I would say 3.5 or higher. And yeah, so that's the education section. Um, now I'm going to show you an example again. Um, I don't know if you are going to catch it, but I am using references to um, Parks and Recreation um, in here um, for the example. Uh, so not a real resume, not a real person. And, but yeah, so this is what the education section could look like. Um, as you can see, it's in chronological order with the latest experience first. So um, this is the preferred method for hiring managers since it is easier to read and map out. Um, and yeah, so you can see the institution name, follow the by the degree type and the graduation date. And in the case for uh, the college degree, there is a major that is included. Um, again, there are many different ways to format this section, but this example shows us what content should look like. Um, but okay, so I don't know if there's any questions or any comments so far. Um, but if not, uh, I think we can move on to the next slide. Um, and so now um, we're going to talk about the relevant experience section. The section is um, arguably the most important part of a resume. This is where you show the hiring manager you have the skills to fulfill the duties of the job that you're applying to. As I previously mentioned, work experience might be more important for the employer than education is. So you could consider listing experience before the education section. And so in this section, you can add work experience and any other experiences that can be relevant to the job that you're pursuing. Um, this can be any volunteer work or apprentice experiences if you have not listed them before on the education section. Uh, if you have a lot of work experience, you will need to narrow down the experiences you include to the ones that are the more recent and more relevant. If you have been working for a lot of years, you only need to include the last a um, couple of jobs that you had maybe for the last five to 10 years. Um, so no need to include the summer job you had 20 years ago, unless it is extremely, extremely relevant to the job um, that you're applying to, which well, in more case, most cases, honestly, if this won't be happening since you could show similar skills through more relevant um, experiences and activities. Yeah. So now, if you don't have experience that is directly related to the job that you want, you will need to think a little bit more on how your current experience relates to the job. For example, if you're applying for an administrative assistant job and have never worked as one before, but you have worked in a job that requires a lot of attention to detail, scheduling, taking notes, um, et cetera, you would need to emphasize that you have these of your skills so that someone looking at your resume uh, can easily pick out that you are fit for the administrative assistant role. For each position, um, you want to include the organization name, its location, um, the position title you held, the dates of employment, and a description of the responsibilities and achievements you had under that role. Uh, this seems like a lot of information, 
um, it can, can be a little overwhelming. Um, so I'm going to spend a bit more time um, going over examples now. Um, so yeah, so the first example here, the classical direct one, um, is and here you can see um, that everything that I everything that I mentioned, the company name, um, right there with national service, um, the location, Pawnee, Indiana, uh, the title of the position held, regional director, and a description of the role, and the, the little bullet points right there, and um. Um, you can see two different jobs here, um, but note that you can include as many or as little experiences as you see fit, as long as they don't make your resume longer than one page. Uh, the most important component in this section is the description of the role themselves. Um, you probably want to work on this part for a little longer than in other sections of your resume. Uh, and then make sure that you are including about two to three bullet points to describe what you did on a certain role and what you accomplished, et cetera, et cetera. And another thing that I want to point out is on how the descriptions are worded. As you can see in this example, um, it's, it uses um, each bullet point uses action verbs that um, sorry I lost my thought uh, action verbs to start the sentence so here you see save manage work organize all of those are action verbs and here I have a link to a long list of action verbs you can find a similar one. I go go searching action verbs to use on a resume. And once you find one, um, you can peruse the list and find a great word to use to describe your role. Um, let me show you here the list. Um, oh no. Um, I have to reshare my screen. Give me a second. So here, um, you can see a very long list of different action verbs that, uh, these are not just verbs that can be used for a resume, this is just action verbs, period. But you can find one that um, lists out anything that is very common to use on a resume. Um, so correlate, correct, um, delegate, develop, discuss, all of those are actually pretty good to use on a resume, edit, establish. Uh, yeah, but something that I do want to point out is that um, I recommend that you switch to the past tense when you are um, describing some um, something that happened in the past. So instead of just saying evaluate, you want to say evaluated, um, examine, examined, uh, things like that, and um, yeah, so um, where was I? Um, oh, yeah, so also to keep things more uniform, I advise that you keep the descriptions of your current job position in the past tense. Um, so you might be working on those things or accomplishing the stuff at this moment, but it's just best to keep everything um, the same. So in the past, um, figured, facilitated, things like that. And all right, um, so I'll, I'm gonna switch over to the presentation again, give me a second. Um, but for now, you can also ask questions if you have them. 
Um, if not, we can continue. Uh, yeah, so. There we go. Okay, so here is another example um, of work experience, of what the work experience could look like on a resume. Um, in this example, this example is, is has a, a series of different roles within the same company. So you don't need to list the company name for every single role in if the, the different jobs that you held happen concurrently. Um, as I mentioned before, the roles are listed in chronological order and use action verbs to describe the job responsibilities and accomplishments. Here, created, spearheaded, established, coordinated, etc. Right. Um, we can move on to the next section then, uh, which is skills. So, the next section actually is great to have, um, but you can skip it if there's no space available after listing all of your education and work experiences. Um, but note that sometimes by just changing up a couple of things in the formatting and the sign of your resume, you could have enough space to add additional information. Uh, the skills section is great to include since it's a good space to highlight the skills you have that might not really fit into the job description from the previous section. Uh, try to only list skills that are relevant to the job that you're looking for. Um, so you can list your skills under different categories, um, such as technical, language, or interpersonal skills. Uh, if, for example, you know how to use different software that might be helpful to complete your desired role, or if the role is kind of facing, you might want to note that you know other languages and have good communication skills. Um, just like, those are some a few examples. You can also sort of brainstorm um, different skills you, you might have or you might want to add um, by just searching um, skills to add on a resume on Google. And there's a lot of really long lists and you can just select the ones that you do have and that would fit, fit really well in your resume. Um, okay, so here is an example, um, actually two examples. Um, so here we have some technical skills and some language. And then here is another example. Um, again, um, for the language, it describes the level of proficiency per language. And yeah, so that's what the skill section looked like. Um, all right. Um, to the next section now. So um, next we have the final two sections, actually. Both are together here. And you can choose to include both one or none of these sections. These ones are completely optional as well. Uh, the other activity section here, um, that one can be used to list out um, other activities you've been involved in, but that aren't directly relevant to the job you're applying to. It can also include membership in national organizations and leadership positions that you held at a local or national level. For example, you might be a member of a professional organization such as the American Planning Association. Um, if you're a student, you might be a member of an honor society. Uh, for leadership positions, you might be the president of a club. Um, or maybe you are an elected city council member. Um, this is where you want to include those types of experiences if they don't fit into any of the sections previously mentioned. So if they don't fit into, especially the work experience um, section of the resume. Uh, so moreover, um, if you normally volunteer with your church, uh, a local animal shelter or any other um, a volunteering organization, but your involvement is not really relevant to the job that you are looking for, then this is also a place where you could include it. And you want to include these types of activities because it can help 
tell the hiring manager a story of who you are and why you're a great fit for the organization. For example, a person uh, can be, might be applying to a job in a company that cares a lot about sustainability and the environment, but the job role itself has nothing to do with sustainability. So the person has no mention of it on the work experience section of the resume. Um, but this person volunteers by helping to plant trees and clean up parks um, on their free time. So they, they want to list these experiences under the other activity section because when the hiring manager sees this, they can know that this person's interests match up with the company's culture. And this might end up being the deciding factor between um, who, who they want to hire. So I absolutely recommend that you add this kind of information if you think it's going to help you out um, get, get a job. And yeah, so the other optional section is the honors and awards section. And this is where you can list any praise that you have received in the past. Uh, for example, maybe you were the employee of the month a couple of times um, at your last employment, or you received a scholarship to continue your education because you had good grades. This section can help tell hiring managers that you that other people think that you are great. And so, yeah, it's it's a it's a neat place to sort of highlight those kinds of rewards you've received over over the the years. Um, okay, so I actually have an example for the words and acknowledgements here, and um, really it can just be a one line if that's all you have. It doesn't have to be super long, um, but yeah, um, this is actually what the resume would look like when all the sections are put together. Um, here you can see the contact information, the education um, section, the experience, and um, um, the skill section, and the words. Um, yeah, so this is what the actual sheet will look like when everything's put together. And I, in this example, I use a resume template to make the resume, uh, and I'll go more into detail on how you can do that as well in a minute. Um, but first, um, I'll take any questions if there are anything so far. Um, if not, I will move on. Okay. So now I want to show you. I'm um, sorry. Um, I want to note a few things in terms of design and formatting. So we mainly cover so far in this workshop, the content of the resume. And we, we're not going to spend a lot of time covering the other important components of the resume, AKA the design and look and feel of the resume. Um, I think there's a question, let me check. Oh yeah, so there's a question on for how to include a career break on a resume. Um, so depending on how long the career break was, uh, that's where you might, if it's like only a couple months, um, you could include if you did anything, um, maybe like some volunteer work, um, you could include that. Uh, if you didn't, I um, mean, the pandemic really impacted a lot of people. A lot of people were had a, maybe a year or, or longer off, um, then it's, it just really depends. Um, I think that there are many ways to do it. Um, it really depends on the situation, the specific situation of how you want to do it. Um, sometimes maybe parents take some time off, like more extended, extended time off from working, and employers might not look into that too well, but this is where instead of doing a chronological resume, which is the traditional one, you wanna do one that sort of just highlights the, the specific jobs that we, uh, 
um, that are very relevant to, or in the other experiences that are relevant to the job position. Um, yeah, I don't know like how long your break was between jobs, but if you did anything, really anything that even if it wasn't a job job itself, you could include it. Um, sometimes like people have situations where they have to take care of their loved ones and they have to take time off work because they have to be there 24 seven. And so that might also be included. Um, you may just have to think a little bit more of how that those skills that you gained um, by helping your family can carry out into the workforce. Um, so that could be just having a better understanding or communication with people or interpersonal skills and building those things. So um, there's definitely, it's like a place where you can be a little more creative on how um, you want to present yourself to employers. And, but yeah, I think that things are changing a bit now where when employers see a gap, they, they definitely want to know what happened, what you did there. So you do, if you do have a gap and they do ask you into an interview, they're still going to ask you why there was a gap. So you might as well add it in there if you want to. If you don't, then you have to know that you need to have a response for your resume in, in the interview for what happened during the gap. What were you doing? Uh, yeah, so I don't know if that answers your question or not. Um, if not, we can continue the conversation. Um, you can ask me more questions. But uh, yeah, so okay. Um, yeah, you're welcome. And yeah, so now where was I? Yeah, so I was talking about the design and feel of the resume, which I'm not going to talk about a lot because in a little bit, I'm going to show you a couple of different tools that we have available here at the library um, that can help you take care of that, that sort of stuff. And so really where you should be focusing more, it's on the content itself, um, how you're wording your resume, um, how you, what you're including and not including, and which is uh, more important, you don't need to become an expert in design and things like that. But yeah, some, just a little note on some of the basics that you probably do need to take into account as you start your crafting your, your resume. It's around the, the font um, that you use. And um, yeah, so you want to select something that is easily readable. Um, and you also want to be consistent in the size of the font that you use. Um, so everything should be the same size, except for the name which you, your name, which you should make it um, larger than everything else and also bolded. And yeah, so some of the fonts that I recommend and um, are really easy to work with, easy to read is Times New Roman, Arial, Helvetica, or Derriman. It's up to you what you think is the best one, um, but I don't recommend you use something very fancy, um, very modern, or anything like that. Just keep it, keep it something classic. That's what employers like to see, and it's easy for them to read as well. Um, right. Um, right. So now I will cover a few do's and don'ts for your resume. You should definitely double check everything multiple times to make sure everything is spelled correctly and that you have no typos. If you can um, have a friend or family member take a look at it since they might catch up a mistake with fresh eyes more easily than you will. And just as a reminder, you should use action birds for all of the bullet points under your work experiences and make sure that you're also using different words, um, different action words, action verbs. Um, and if you are going to repeat an action verb, don't use it under um, the same work experience because yeah, that can just look very repetitive, um, not so neat. And yeah, so finally, you want to list out only the information that is relevant for the job that you're applying to. Uh, this 
sort of leads into one of the things that you shouldn't do on your resume, which is to not go over one page. Um, very rarely will an employer want to see more than a single page. Um, very few cases, maximum is two pages. Um, but yeah, so they must look at a lot of resumes every day. Um, so they're only going to glance over yours very quickly and keeping it short and concise will make it will make you seem more professional and also just easier for them to just see how you are a great fit for the role that you're applying to. And yeah, so like I said, very rare occasion you will see, you will need to do multiple pages for your resume. For me personally, the only times I've seen it happen is for jobs in higher education. Um, professors, um, I've seen professors tend that have with their resumes that they tend to list out all of their publications they've done throughout their careers. So their resumes could be as long as five or even more pages. Uh, but for more traditional jobs in corporate um, sort of positions, um, companies are not looking for anything longer than one page. And so, and finally, um, yeah, I guess this, yeah, this one's an important one, it's a very important one, is that you should try to avoid making exaggerations or false statements in your resume um, because you can easily get caught on a lie. Um, even if you get hired, you once they catch the lie, you will immediately lose your job. So it's just best to avoid them altogether. Um, all right. Um, so now I want to talk to you um, about different tools that can help you get started making your resume. Uh, these tools are all available at the library for free. And yeah, so you don't need to have a library card to use to use them, but I recommend that you get one if you don't have it yet. All you need is a photo ID and a proof of residence in Aurora. So it could just be your driver's license, which has both. <laughs> and um, yeah, so back to the tools. Um, first, I'm going to talk about Microsoft Word. Um, Word is a word processing program that can help you with type of different documents, um, many different kinds. And yeah, um, let me open that for you. I'm going to start sh stop sharing for a second so that I can open it. I'm just going to share my whole screen. Yeah, you would just switch up word, um, it up, and, um, oops, I guess it wants me to update. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, so in the case um, for resumes, you can use a template. Here you can see there's a lot of different templates available. And um, you want to go to here where it says like resume and cover letters. Um, so yeah, work makes available plenty, plenty of different resumes. Um, as you can see, uh, a lot of them are very overwhelming and some of them are very bland. So you just have to pick and choose whatever works for you. Um, I, what I've always heard is that if you are applying to a creative job, then you want to have um, resumes that look like this, are very flashy, very colorful. But if you're not doing that, you just want to do something kind of classic and basic. Um, so something like this one's right here, this three that I'm pointing out. Um, I'm going to open one. So you, once you click one, you select selected, you can just click create and then it opens up a new word um, document for you 
Um, this is a little longer than one page, but like I said, we probably do want to keep it shorter than that. Um, but that has to do a lot with the spacing and how much words it has. Um, so instead of um, using paragraphs, I recommend you just use bullet points, keep it short and concise. And yeah, so that's what um, the resume would look like, um, the resume template. And yeah, if you come to the library to use our computers, you can always ask um, any of the digital service assistants in our three ranches, any of our three ranches we have, um, somebody available that can that is equipped to help you uh, find a resume template on Word, um, get started on up to this step. And then after that, you this is where you come in and start editing. So here you would like type your name, um, your address, things like that. So just like filling in the blanks of whatever there is here. And then you can also change this. But like I said, instead of a paragraph, do a bullet point. Um, bullet point right here, an example of child subscription. Um, sorry, I can't spell. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's sort of what you would do here on Word. Um, if you have your resume already set up and you just want to edit it, you can also use Word to open it up and that's where you want to edit it. Um, I've seen a lot of people coming here into the library with only a PDF, not the Word um, version of it. So a PDF is not editable. It, it, you cannot change it. It's basically like a picture. You cannot alter the picture um, easily. Um, same for a PDF, you cannot alter it. So make sure that once you're done editing, um, you save two different versions, one as a PDF and one as a Word document. The Word document, um, here, let's see this. Um, we'll do, yeah, my computer. Um, right here, when it says save as type, that is a type of um, document that you want to save it as. So there's different, different, many different options. And you do, like I said, I want to do two different ones, a Word document, and then you would save it again as a PDF. And then that's how you would, um, you would have your two versions. The PDF is what you can just send to uh, employers. And then the Word document is when maybe in a year or two when you're applying to new positions, then you will pull up to update and edit. And all right, I, let me go back to the presentation. Oops. Okay, there we go. Um, so the next step is Brain Fuse. Brain Fuse is really cool, really cool tool um, that we have here at the library um, where you can find um, templates, you can receive live expert advice um, from somebody that can help you write your resume but also help you with interview preparation, which is really neat. And um, you can also just get just more general career resources and advice, advice that can help you out. Um, but let's go into brain view so I can show you the tool. Uh, here you can see there's a lot of different tools that you can use for your resume. So, for um, job interviews, I said, and then just career um, stuff. And yeah, I you just need to make an account. It's really, really quick. Um, I actually have an account, so I'm going to log in. All right. Yeah, so I'm logging and um, just yesterday I submitted my resume on Resume Lab. And this right here, you have 
you get so many to click get. So you, you would just upload your resume, and then a few hours later, up to, two, up to 24 hours later, you would have somebody uh, revising it. So here I'll show my resume. Um, there's a lot of liver notes in there um, that people gave me. Well, actually one person gave me. And so you can do that as well. Um, oops, let me go back to um, or to BrainFuse. And so, yeah, that's, that's one of the, the tools that you can use. It's really great. But then you can also set up a call with a person um, live and they can talk to you about um, how you can make your resume better and just provide you with that assistance. And then, um, of course, um, there's also some additional templates you can use here. And there's three different kinds. You have the chronological, um, a combination. Um, you can see the descriptions of each one in here. Um, and then you can pick and choose which one fits better for your, um, for your instance. Um, and yeah, so again, I really recommend BrainFuse. It's really easy to use and really helpful um, because, I mean, once you get over sending your resume into a lot of places and you start getting calls in, you can also use it for um, interview preparation for those more, um, for just more interviews. And then there's also, um, I was playing around with it as well. Um, and here are the career stuff. There's unemployment assistance. You can get somebody that can help you fill out unemployment. Um, so life help um, here at the library. Not no one really knows how to help um, patrons how to to fill out unemployment. Like we can help you get started on the web page for unemployment. We we don't know how to or we cannot recommend you on how to do it or advise you on it. But here um, you have a resource that can sort of help you out. And um, there's other things that you can take different tests to see. Maybe you want to change careers um, to see what really fits with your personality, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I was playing around with it yesterday as well. Um, I don't remember how to get back to the one that I was playing with, um, but it's pretty neat um just in general um it might have been this one i don't remember but there's just lots and lots of different careers and it just can tell you um oh it was carriage parachute so here it can give you um what jobs after taking some tests um this, this are the, the jobs that were selected for me that fit with my interest and my skills. So you can do similar stuff as well. Um, all right. Um, so um, that's pretty much it. I can take final questions now. Um, if, if there's any, um, please let me know. Um, I do know that. Um, Someone, I think, yeah, the, the guy, the person that was asking a question earlier um, popped in on the call, kind of in the middle of it. Um, but so I just want to note that this is being recorded and is also on Facebook Live and it'll be there on our webpage. So if you missed the first, the beginning of the presentation, you can look back into it, um, which really, which covers the contract info, education, and uh, work experience sections of the resume. Um, but all right, um, if there aren't any questions, then this concludes the workshop. Um, thank you so much for joining. I hope you gained something from it and that are now better to craft the best version of your resume. Um, again, just let me know if there's any questions now um, before I end this call. Um, Everybody and have a good weekend.